Okay, so good morning and welcome to Monkey House on Mondays. Uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays because I've got so much demand, which is absolutely brilliant. So thank you for all of you for your feedback. Um, today I've got Joe with me from Big Fish Media. So Joe, how are you today? Hi, good morning, David. Yeah, very well, thanks. Uh, you know, it's a bit like Groundhog Day, isn't it? But it's uh, always nice to get back to my desk on a Monday. Yeah, absolutely. It's been it's been a bad, not a bad weekend here, actually. So quite a lot of physical activity for us. So, but what are you doing for physical activity? What are you doing to stay healthy and sane at the moment? Sure. Well, I'm very lucky. I live um, down in Cornwall by the beach. Um, oh, uh, less you? lucky. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just out. It's just out there. If I could turn my <laughs> camera around, oh. you'll see a nice vista of Porth Beach down in Newquay. Yeah, it's very nice. But um, on the more unlucky side, I've got three kids um, under six, so they need um, running like dogs, you know, like a pack of wild <laughs> animals every day. So, yeah, we're making the most of our natural um, local surroundings, which is lovely. Uh, but oh, very much interesting, um, being in the facilities, you know, local to us. Yeah, uh, oh, that's, that's lovely. Oh, really nice. I, I am really jealous and envious. Um, when we finish the conversation, you can turn the camera around so I can have a look. That's beautiful. OK, so, Joe, what we were going to talk about today is around digital communication. Um, so but to, to help us all out, what do you mean by the term digital communication? OK, well, um, it's essentially what we were all terribly afraid of um, and a lot of people shied away from right at the beginning. And it is essentially communication with your customers on a digital platform, on any digital platform that could be on your website. It could be on social media, it could be as we're doing now via, via video conferencing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that kind of contact that you have with your clients, operators, members um, outside right. of being in the gym, which actually okay. is. is quite a valuable resource to us particularly now <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. yeah no that's interesting so what types of things do people do well at the moment okay so people are doing uh, there's, there's kind of two camps at the moment there's um uh, as actually we just mentioned uh, just before when we started recording um there's the camp that thought um lockdown meant everything shuts down and we kind of mm. go into our hermit shell and we don't come out until whenever the lockdown um comes uh we, when we get out and there's the other camp who's really embraced this and they've really um used the resources available to them and that is their digital communications and lots of our clients have done this fantastically well and become much more innovative with how they can connect to their clients and that can be in a variety of different ways um through particularly social media let's face it the people who are furloughed clients and members who wouldn't who would be in the gym and now aren't are at home um are using social media in vast amounts they're on it for a huge amount of time they're consuming yeah. huge amounts of content um, and that content now, it really is up to us to make that content really innovative, really mm. connecting with people, particularly on social, whether the algorithms really punish you if you're not personable enough. Um, right. And really that human connection outside of not being in the gym, you know. OK. And, and how can we trust all of this stuff? You know, I, 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 my phone pings about 40 times a minute at the minute with a new news story or a new bit of this or a new bit of that. How can we trust all of that as consumers? That actually what we're seeing and what people are telling us to do is actually safe or correct yeah absolutely it's a good point and i think this is part of also a wider conversation about pre-covid um social media had a very bad reputation with its reputation mm -hmm. was, was in the gutter really what with um, cambridge analytica and fake news and actually during covid i think it's um it, you know we've actually realized again social media's beauty social media's power and it's but it is up to the consumer to make considered editorial decisions about what they're reading and so actually how you can trust it is by um as a consumer of social media following the pages and brands that you trust that you know are not going to give you false information or information that, that puts you um in harm's way um, yeah. or anything like that so i think that building that trust and this is part of how from the other way around um when you're talking to your members you're building brand, you're building authority, and you're building trust. And it's that trust that is actually lasting us through this period. Um, and I, yeah. I talk to our clients at Big Fish all the time about building authority and trust in this arena. And this is when it matters at the mo at, you know, at its most, um, yeah. that, that the people consuming that their content know this content to be, of, first of all, of value, and then secondly, yeah. second of all, completely, um, uh, yeah, real and authentic, yeah. personable, and uh yeah and a value really good value absolutely and that that personable bit has been really interesting because i'm seeing lots of, of instructors that i know all of a sudden they're in my lounge they're doing classes yeah. in the lounge and it, it's and it's their lounge as well and it's really interesting i've started looking at pictures on people's walls <laughs> and 
And that's just a, it's just a area, isn't it? Yeah, it's just incredible. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. What's that about? You know, you see empty wine racks and things. And you think, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, We're but doesn't it connect you so much at a deeper <laughs> kind of thing? Oh, so Brian, my, you know, super buff uh, PT, lives in a house just like me. You know, he's, he's not this person that I can, you know, I can, I can never achieve the existence of. Um, there yeah. they are. And I think it's a really good point as well about seeing your particular instructor, because I know there's a lot of fear that we're never going to be able to return and that actually people have, have gone online to consume fitness videos and they'll never return to the gym. But actually what we found is people are missing that human contact with the people at the gym, with, you know, the, 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 the facility owners and the, uh, you know, the people there. And I think that that's a really kind of nice takeaway from this that actually you can produce workout videos all you want but unless you can see your Brian and he's mm -hmm. there gives saying well I know that you've got a bit of a funny hamstring or you're really strong at this but but we need to work at that unless you have that actual connection I think um uh you know that that output is lost and so I think the pers personal bit is is very important absolutely are, are you aware of any organizations that are measuring the participation because one of my concerns is, you know, we, we saw actually Active Lives from Sport England last quarter. Was, it was a good quarter. We saw an uplift. We're obviously going to see a, a downturn for this quarter because we've been closed. But lots of people are consuming this stuff online. Are, are organisations recording it as a, as a participant? I see we big fish for social don't actually deal down at the bottom to the facilities. Right. We're more the operators who support the facilities. So I don't know at that level how it's yeah. being, um, how, how it's being you know, kind of monitored and how the analytics are working. But I think it's key that, you know, that talking about are we monitoring the anal analytics is an interesting question because in terms of content, this is one of the times that most of the time we never have time to really deep it in, get into our analytics of any organisation mm -hmm. to look at content that's valuable to, to your clients. And this yeah. is a prime example of a time when you can get really detailed, you can really get nerdy about what you can pull out of your content of you know what's working for us what isn't working for us let's shape this better going forward and now's mm. a really good time to do that yeah absolutely and that whole reflection piece i think is something i've talked to all of my guests about is using this time to reflect on what we do well what we can do better so with that in mind what should we be doing as organizations to really maximize our impact as we come out of covid19 the lockdown using our digital communication yeah, so great question. Um, particularly if you um, if you take into account those that have you know really embraced this period of digital innovation and really connecting and 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 using it as a way to retain consumers um, and to retain their members. Um, essentially, the solution is do not take your foot off the accelerator. Don't then come out the other side and think right, we've done with the digital communication. COVID's gone. We're just going to be here in the gym and hope that people come back to us. Um, understand that this is a tool you have to leverage. Uh, it is a client retention. Um, we have to move with the time. So even when um, digital communication first came about and people were kind of ignoring it and hoping it would go away and thinking it would encroach on their bottom line, um, it was never going to not advance because people didn't use it. Um, sure. People people were going to use it if you were, were involved or not. And I think the same goes for outside the other side of COVID. If you are those at the front innovating and, and really harnessing this really powerful tool, you're going to come out much better. And I think the the, the answer is um, be innovative. Don't be afraid of it. Keep going yeah. um, and, and use it to your advantage. Don't, you know, don't see it as the big bad wolf, who, you know, who's there to eat your bottom line, because actually it can be used for quite the reverse. Mm, absolutely. I've, I've got a few friends who have said, you know, they've done their first ever Les Mills class because yeah. they could do like they're, they're guys, they're blokes, they just wouldn't have ever crossed the threshold of the leisure centre and taken part in one of those right. classes. It just right. wasn't on their agenda. So yeah, I and guess also there's, those, there's those who I think have been can be intimidated to walk into a gym mm -hmm. and think, I just don't belong there. I want to get fit, but actually I'd rather go for a, a walk around the block or a run around the block because nobody can see me. Where actually this is quite a good entry into mm -hmm. this, a s situation where you can build up online and get your confidence, understand that you are part of this community, you can be part of this community. There are others like you in the community and actually, it, you know, it could be a way to really leverage, um, you know, joiners as well as retention. Yeah, absolutely. For me, I see it in two ways. I see it as a, a bit of a pathway to use a sport development term where people can try something and then move on to buy. But I think you're right about those organisations that go, actually, we've got another channel here. We've got another channel to increase our membership. 
without physically inc increasing our, the size of our building and therefore our costs. So I think there's uh, some really interesting membership packages that will come out of this lockdown period. But I, I, I guess for me, the, 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 I'm really interested in, in, in the foundations because I think there are people who, are, who aren't doing what they should do. So therefore they're doing the social media, the, the, the digital. But when they go back, how do we keep hold of that knowledge and that talent that we've created? Mm, well, I think that it, that is going to be the next challenge for those facilities. Right. First of all, it's going to be opening and opening safely. But second yeah. of all, of course, it's going to be communicating how you're going to be keeping people safe, whether you're open, whether, you know, it's reduced hours. Yeah. And, and, and you are, you know, people are going to have to invest in being able to um, provide that digital communication. It, it will take yeah. investment you know, and getting the, getting the best people in so that you know that you're empowered to do that and you're in a good place and big fish can off obviously you know provide that sort of digital um consultancy for people uh, if they Excellent. feel you know unable to do it for themselves yeah because i think going forward it'll be more than just we've got an exercise class it'll be actually you know silly little things like that this is we this is us cleaning the showers this is us cleaning the tools yeah. this is medical use it's it's you know that what people call no-brainers and givens aren't mm -hmm. anymore it got mm -hmm. to describe to give our customers confidence and the digital platforms are all going to give us that opportunity to share the great stuff that we're doing. I think it's also allowed um, a lot of organisations to be much more brave about talking in a much more personable way mm. because there isn't anything very you know top downy um you know we're the authority and we're going to look down our nose and kind of tell you how it is which never worked on social anyway but but lots yeah. of organizations are are veer you know veer towards being a much more professional on social media than they should be and then during covid it has been about you know here's jill at home doing this yeah. and here's brian at home doing that and mm. actually i think that people will see if they if they look at the analytics of how that content has performed is performing extremely well and it's because the social media algorithms are completely set up to do just that to be more yeah. personable and, and to not mm -hmm. be b2b or b2c but but person to person and that's exactly what it's about it's about connecting with the individual at home and, and they're on social media platforms it's in a social capacity is you know it's in the name absolutely that's really interesting joe and you know as part of this obviously we put it out on youtube and we put it out on our social media we've had some some really nice comments but it, it is interesting on the analytics you know we were talking earlier about the length of the conversation and how people are dropping in and dropping out depending on the length of the conversation so just give us one tip then to to really maximize our impact for digital communication before we close the conversation okay uh it's going to be one tip in two parts which is um if you really deep deep dive deep into the analytics at the moment your um consumers online are on at the moment facebook all morning they peak at about mm. 11 and then they drop off at about three they're getting involved with the kids suppers things like that instagram right the way through to the evening be personable okay. be authentic but right. be part of the conversation fantastic what a great way to close the conversation that's brilliant joe thank you so much for your time that's absolutely brilliant Take care, and I'm lo really looking forward to coming down to see your beach. So um, we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks, Joe. Bye bye. Bye, David.